Hello friends on the internet, my name is John and in this episode we will be looking at building a menus with an Umbraco V8. Yes, the humble primary navigation is key whenever we're building any sort of website. So far in this series we haven't looked at it. We're going to look at two different architectural patterns. You can pick the one you like and we're going to go through all the code and everything you need in order to build a, a menu. If you like this video and you have never come across me before, don't forget to scroll your mouse right now, hit that subscribe button and be a legend. Otherwise, let's crack on and start building some menus. Okay, friends who live within the internet, let's start creating some menus. So we're gonna kick things off by looking at the most common pattern that most Embraco developers tend to use. It's not my favorite one. However, it is the one that everyone uses. And what we're gonna do is basically put a tick box on all of our pages, which will enable us to show or hide the menu. So what we're going to do to do this is go within our settings tab up here, as you can see. Now we're going to have to create a, a base document type to do this. So creating a base document type is really simple. The benefit of creating a base document types is we can inherit properties. And this is going to make our code more reliable. And it also means we're going to have to do less setup. So this is ideal. So to create a base document type, all you need to do is click on the three little ellipses create document type, call it something like base controller or base page type. As you can see, I've created one here. Now on my document type, I have created this hide from menu. Original title, so to create it, all I've done is add property, select editor, toggle, and then true or false. Now the important thing when you're creating this property, which hopefully you'll be able to see, is that I called the alias Umbraco Navi Hide. So can you see that? Umbraco Navi Hide. Let's try and zoom in maybe. Is that going to work? Yep. There we go. So the naming of this is semi important. Basically, using Umbraco Navi Hide is going to allow you to use an extension method which comes with Umbraco called Is Visible. So basically, this means we're going to have to write a little bit less code. So our code is going to be a little bit nicer. You could just call it anything you want and manually do the check yourself. It's only going to be, you know, a few extra characters of code. However, I like to do this because it's probably the standard pattern that most people will use. So let's reset our view. Now, in order for us to start using our base document type with other document types, all you simply need to do is create your document types as children. So as you can see in our example right here, I've created something called a simple page. Simple page has got no properties, but as you can see right here, it is inheriting from our base controller and I have my hide from menu in there. So this is really good. It means our code's gonna be standard and we're not gonna have some weird bugs. So if you're using this pattern, this is how you should set up your document types. Now looking in our content tree, I've created a simple example for us. So as you can see here, we've got the menu example. We've got three pages, which are of type simple page. If we look down here, we can see it's simple page. Now page one, if we go to the content, you can see that the page should show in the menu. Page two should hide in the menu. And page three should also show in the menu. Now I've created this view. And again, if you go to my GitHub, you will be able to download this sample site. It's called the Umbraco sample site. Just search for John D. Jones on GitHub and you'll find all the code. So you don't need to worry about copying and pasting it. And as you can see in my simple menu example, right at the top, page two is hidden as expected. Perfecto. So let's have a look at all of this code to see how it appears. So if you're looking at this code, it might be a bit confusing if you haven't seen some of my other videos. So the ones that I recommend you looking at is the view model video, because this will explain all this composed view model. And you also might want to look at the querying video because you might understand the querying bit. But basically what we're doing is we're using the Embraco model builder, using the standard Embraco MVC controller. We're getting our model built model. That's probably the term for it. We're then creating a view model. Now this view model is nothing special, but it's always important to use our view models. So as you can see there, and then we're just doing children dot is visible. And this is that helper method that I was talking about a little while ago. So as you can see, instead of having to do a search for Umbraco Navi hide, we can just do this X dot is visible. So our code's a little bit cleaner. 
Now, if you want to use is visible, you will have to import the umbraco.web using namespace. So without doing this, it will fail. And that is pretty much all you need to do to set up a very simple menu. If you want to look at the code I've created, I've basically copied the Stars kit from the Abulma framework. So as you can see here, I'm importing Abulma CSS. We've got some simple code. Now, what I'm doing here is just basically doing a simple for each on all of those items I've got. And then I'm just getting the URL right there, which is probably obsolete because I want to do this. And we've also displaying the name. So this is pretty much everything you need to do to set up a simple menu or simple primary menu within an Abraco. Next, let's look at how we can make things a little bit more complicated, how we can create like a mega nav or how we can just decouple the menu from our page types, which is the way I prefer. This is time to now look at the second technique to get our menu. And this is the one that I personally use pretty much for every single project that I work on. Now within this pattern, what we're gonna do is create a dedicated area within the content tree for us to create menus. Now, as you can see on the screen in front of us, we have my beautiful menu example that I created. And underneath our simple menu, you can see we have this mega menu. So the technique we're using to get this data is different than the first technique. So let's have a look at it within the CMS. So within the CMS, as you can see here, we've got home and underneath it, we have this menu container or we've got menus. Now, if we open up menus, we can see that we have primary menu. And from this area, we can create as many menus as we want. So we could create a footer menu, for example. And this is what I mean by this pattern is that no matter how many menus you have, you can have a simple area and this is gonna make life much easier for the content editor because they know that when they log in, if they need to update a menu, they can simply go to this area and find the menu they want to. Now, expanding our primary menu, you can see that we have about and contact us. But if we look within our home page here, you can see that we don't have any of these pages. And this is another benefit of this technique. The pages that we create here do not need to mirror the pages which are in the content tree. This is a big limitation of the previous pattern where you have to use exactly the same menu and content items. Now, the other thing um, which is nice about this is that if you wanted to create a mega nav, all you'd have to do is create a separate document type. You could then create it under here and then you can start creating menus under menus. So this is really powerful because it allows us all this flexibility that the first pattern did not. So let's see how this is structured within our document types. So clicking on the settings at the top again, just so you, you saw that. There we go. You can see that I've created a menu container. Menu container does not need to be anything special whatsoever. Now, the only thing that you need to have is a title, otherwise you won't be able to edit and save it. The other thing that you need to do is go over to this permissions. And as you can see right here, where we have allow as root, that I've enabled this. So this means that when we go back to our content tree and we're going create new page, you can see that my menu container is there. Perfect. So going back to settings, we now have our menu. So this is a child of menu container. Again, this does not need to have anything special. All we need to do on this one is make sure that the child node is menu item. And as you can see underneath menu, we have our final menu item document type and it's called menu item. And in here we have a link. Scroll up so you can make sure we can see the link. So to create a link, all you do is click on add property. Now the type of link is up to you. You could create a text box and get people to manually add in a link. You could also create a content picker. The content picker is okay. However, it's only gonna limit the editor to pick pages which are within the CMS. So I don't mind using this. You could also use the multi URL picker and then you could limit the URL picker to only have one item. So this means that you could create an internal link or an external link. However, the type of link is up to you. In this example, I'm gonna use the content picker. And that pretty much narrows up all the document types that we need to create. 
let us now look at how we're going to build this menu within code. Because after all, that is probably the thing that you are going to care about the most. So we're back within our page controller. Now, the thing I should probably point out is that because I'm in a page controller, does not mean that you should be doing this yourself. I'm just doing this for a simple example. If you've seen my video on how to create a header or a footer, I'm assuming that you're using a shared partial controller to be able to render your header. So all of this code should be in there, not on the page itself. Now, as you can see within the index, I'm creating this mega menu property. Now, there's nothing special about my mega menu view models. As you can see here, I've got this navigation item view model, and this is just a simple POCO, which has like a name, a link, a class. So remember, whenever you're passing data from Umbraco into your view, always use a view model because it's gonna make your life a lot easier. So now we've looked at how the structure is, let's have a look at how we're getting the menu data from within Umbraco. So because we're using our render MVC controller here, we get access to Umbraco context simply by typing in Umbraco context within any controller. So what we can do is do Umbraco context. We can get access to the front end cache using the content property, and we can use the get by path. So putting in two slashes, we can then use the menu base type. So this is the menu which has been generated from the model builder. So this is that class. So if we look within our folder structure, you can see that we have our Umbraku published content models and all my published models from the model builder in here. And what we can do within here is do the model type alias. So this is gonna search for all of the menus that are being created in the system, and this is going to return them. Now within this get primary menu, I'm doing a very simple search on name. This probably isn't ideal. However, this is probably for my demo, good enough. So this name here, primary menu, is going to relate to the name within the content tree. Let's have a look at that. Oh, this is annoying, this one. So let's look, so primary menu, this name is now going to equal this code. So this now gives us access to that area within our code base. Now within get primary menu, what we're gonna do is iterate through all the children. We're going to do the sort order the same way that the sort order is in the CMS. This means that the content editor can then decide how the menu is gonna be structured and the order that the menu items are going to appear. And as you can see, after doing this order by, what I'm doing is simply getting the menu item, which is the model builder generated item. Remember, this relates to our menu item here. And then we're going to go back we're gonna get the URL. Now there's different ways of doing this depending on what you've done. And then we're just gonna build up our menu. Now remember, if you actually want to build a mega menu, you potentially would want to have some more children or some more sub menus. As you can see, I've commented this bit of code out. This is where you'd add this bit of code. So what you potentially could do if you wanted to create a mega nav is go back to our menu item page from here, you could then, that's annoying. What you could do, oh, let's click down here. It's not liking it. We could add a property here. We could call this children. From here, we could then have our multi URL picker. And that is the way that we could then create a mega nav. So can you see that? Yeah. So use the multi URL picker within your menu item and that is allow you to create much more powerful menus. However, to keep this little demonstration as simple as possible, I will not do that in this occasion. And as you can see now, I'm building up this list of navigation items, and then I'm simply passing it back to my controller, which is passing it down into my view. Now, looking at the HTML, remember I'm copying all this stuff from the Bulma framework. If you are interested, what we can do is just do all my framework. There we go. All you can do is just come here, get all the docs. You can download it yourself. It's very simple. I won't go into it. It's exactly the same as Bootstrap. However, this is gonna give you all the class and everything to save you having to write it all yourself. 
So this is nice. Going back to our code, you can see that we've got a second example, my mega nav. And all I'm doing is a simple for each again, where all I'm doing is iterating through all the items in my menu collection, and then just rendering out the link and the name. So this second technique is the one that I recommend you use. It might make, um, it might take you a little bit of extra work to get there. However, I do think that the extra flexibility, the ability to add mega navs, the ability to um, make your lives easier for content editors, and more importantly, decoupling all that data from your pages and your document type pages from the menu is a really nice thing because it's gonna give you more flexibility. So I recommend you give this one a try. And this concludes the end of another video. I'm hoping that you found some value out of it. And I'm hoping that you agree with me that spending that extra little bit of time creating the more powerful mega nav architecture is definitely worth it for all that flexibility. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think. Definitely interested to hear. Now I've got some sad news for people out there. This unfortunately is the last video in my Umbraco V8 series. Now fear not for all you Umbraco lovers out there, this is definitely not the last that you'll hear about Umbraco within this channel, guaranteed. Basically right now there's a .NET Core version of Umbraco being worked on, V9, and when V9 is out, hopefully in Q3, so in a couple of months time, I will do a full series on how to build a website using Umbraco V9, and it's gonna teach you everything you know. I'm personally quite excited about doing this video and the series, because it's something I've been looking forward to for about four or five years, so I can't wait for that to happen. In the meantime, if you're wondering what you're going to learn on this channel, fear not. The next episode that you're gonna be seeing is all about the Jamstack. Now, if you never heard of the Jamstack, then this video tutorial is gonna be for you. It's gonna be a series introducing and talking about some of the new modern ways of building websites using a CMS. So currently there are hundreds of different SaaS providers out there. There's CMSs like Contentful, there's hosting companies like Netlify. There's all these new terms. And what I'm gonna do is go through, demystify it all, show you how super simple it is using five, you know, 15 minute videos. You're gonna learn everything to get set up. Now, you might be a lover of Umbraco or EpiServer. However, this series is just gonna give you some awareness of all these new cool things. So I'm really excited about doing it and I think you're gonna learn a lot. So keep channel and keep watching, keep channel, keep watching this channel. So uh, to see all of that stuff. Again, if this all sounds good to you, then this is a YouTube channel. I plug this every single week, but hit that subscribe button, move the mouse, do it right now. It's very easy to lose a channel. So I'm hoping you'll get some amazing value from it. Otherwise, if you wanna do me the solid, hit that like button, trick YouTube into showing my face to more people. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing day and happy coding people.